Welcome to my channel. In this video, as the title reads, I'm going to be talking about how I got into my master's program at CEU and everything that was required for this whole process. As some of you guys have been requesting on how the whole master's program was lined out, what were the required documents, how long did the process take, all of this is going to be included in today's video. Basically, I applied to CEU, which is Central European University, in 2019. I applied in January because January 31st is the last day to apply for anything that is financially supported. That meaning scholarships, financial aid, but normally, generally, all applications stay open until I believe end of May basically or maybe even April. So like during that time is when the actual deadline closes, but if you want to apply for a scholarship, 31st of January, just keep that in mind. Application links are all the same. Basically, you make an account on the website of the university and then you make the application. I'm just gonna include all the links down below, very simple processes. You can just follow the instructions on the website as I did. Very, very, very clear, very easy, nothing complicated. You just follow their instructions and voila. So I applied for a scholarship in 2019. However, I did not get a scholarship. I got a tuition waiver. That means that the tuition that I had to pay generally as a normal student, it was erased and only a certain percentage of it was left for me to pay. So it was overall 13,000 euros that was the entire tuition payment for the entire year of the master's program. However, 10,000 of it was waived by the university and I only had to pay 3,000. Along with this, I had to pay 200 euros for some kind of a student card and then 100 for the uh, registration and then 30 euros for the application. So over and all, I had to pay 3,330 wow, euros for this whole application process just for this university. Also, keep in mind that you can apply to different departments and different programs all with the same uh, application fee. So 30 euros for the application will include um, your application for several departments. So you can, for example, apply for public policy, human rights or gender studies all at the same time. And you just pay 30 euros for all of these applications. Yes, so that was the process. Now, now that we've gotten the fees and the deadlines out of the way, what were the required documents? The required documents are all actually on the website as well, but specifically what I had to get was the transcript and diploma from my bachelor's degree, so either my actual diploma or certificate saying that I'm going to be graduating at a specific time and that basically is guaranteeing that my graduation will happen. Anything like that will work and you also need to apply with a like a letter of purpose saying that why are you applying for this program specifically how will this help you in your future career why did you specifically choose CEU why did you choose this program in CEU are there any professors or experts that really inspired you to study in this program if you select a professor who's in the program you want to study in and that provides a certain course that is in your interest. You can also include that in your letter, which will make it all the more compelling. You can also explain why you need the financial help if you're applying for the scholarship program or some kind of financial aid. Another important step for me was to get recommendations from my professors or previous employers. So these recommendations, they work in a way that you ask your professor or your employer to give you a recommendation for this program right and it has to be somewhat relevant to the program it cannot just be anybody right so okay so what i did is i asked my international law and organizations professor to give me a recommendation i also asked my professor from international law to give me a uh, recommendation as well as my previous employer he was the head of the office of a human rights organization in istanbul and I was his assistant for a year, so he gave me a recommendation based on the previous work that I've had in this human rights organization and all the work that I did. So everything was kind of relevant to what I was aiming for, which is human rights. This is the program that I applied for. So these recommendations were sent privately to the university, so I never got to read 
the recommendations, which is very normal. You should not be reading your recommendations. So after you submit your application, then on two weeks to a month, I don't really quite remember the exact time, but during that time, you're gonna be contacted by the university and they're gonna want to interview you. Now, they give you an idea of what they're gonna be asking you in the interview, so they'll give you some time to prepare. Sometimes, like in my department, which is the legal studies department, they will send you a certain case you need to look into and you need to study. You'll be asked questions on this case during the interview as well. And my interview was held with a professor of mine and she was really lovely. She asked me questions regarding the case and it was obviously relating to a human rights case, which is my program. And then she asked me about why did I choose CEU? Why specifically this program? What are my plans after graduation? Da 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 da. Obviously this interview is also testing your level of English, your communication skills, your energies, like the impression that you would make because they like to specifically choose students who really, really require or need this program and really do qualify for it as well. Now, after that, you're gonna have to wait a couple of months for them to send you your acceptance or your rejection. What happened with me is in 2019, after I made the initial application and I had the interview, I got my acceptance and I got a great offer from the university, which I accepted. However, due to like these unforeseeable circumstances, I could not attend the university. So basically I had to decline all of it. And it was really, really difficult, but whatever, it just, it happened. And um, so I started working. Also, I had to pay 3,000 euros, remember? So that was very, very difficult for me because at the time I was a student and I did not have that much money, so I had to come up with that money somehow. Even though I did, it was still very, very late. So I couldn't pay the tuition fee on time and it was just a whole disaster. So I decided to hold off my master's studies until next year and decided to get a full-time job in Istanbul and work and save money for the next time I apply. So in 2020, I applied again and the same process. 31st of January was the deadline for scholarship applications and I did so and I almost submitted the same exact letter just with a little bit of modification as to what I've been doing for the past year and why I'm applying again and then I had to get new recommendations which I spoke to the same professors and same employer and I asked them for the same recommendation again and da 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 also paid the same fees all over again because if you pay a fee it's non-refundable so it just goes so all that money that I paid just gone but still I had to pay um, the student something card payment and the registration payment, application fee payment, I did all of that and then um, after I had the interview as well, this time I had an interview with another professor who was really really great, our interview was like literally the best conversation we've had, it was just easy breezy, she was lovely and then afterwards in a bit of a time, I guess like one month later after my interview, I got my acceptance um, letter as well as my offer. So the offer includes the, your financial information. The university is offering you a financial opportunity, right? So that will include either a full scholarship or a tuition waiver or some kind of financial aid that you have applied for. So this time, the second time that I applied, out of the 13,000, 11,000 was waived. So I only had to pay 2,000 euros, which was shocking to me because I was expecting not even to get such an offer the second time, but I got a better offer as well as I got a stipend so every month I would receive money from the university with 240 euros and that was really great as well as they would cover my health insurance bills here in Austria which was absolutely amazing. Yeah, not only did I um, get like a tuition waiver a lot more than I did last year but I also got a stipend which was absolutely amazing and I just knew that this time around it was really meant to be and because I already saved money and I was preparing for this I was able to pay everything on time and start the processes on time. So after you receive your acceptance letter and your offer you have to accept the offer so you need to sign the offer and send it to the university saying that you accept it or you need to say that the offer doesn't work for you because if the offer is not really suitable to your financial needs, you can still tell the university and say like, 
I still cannot afford it. Can you please give me something better, more suitable for my situation? So they will do the best they can. Sometimes you get waitlisted if you do that, and sometimes you get a better offer. It just depends on the situation. And then after you've accepted the offer and you have signed the, the offer, basically you become recruited to the university. And then you start your visa process. Now visa takes up to three months. As some exceptional circumstances, it can take more than three months to issue. Because it's Europe, especially in Austria, it's really, really, really difficult. So you, not just Austria, because they also have a campus in Hungary, in Budapest, so it depends on which country you're applying for. It still is very difficult and you need to apply at least three months ahead. So you need to make an application with the Austrian embassy or consulate in your country and like as soon as possible, as soon as you get the acceptance letter and you sign your offer. And then you need to start preparing your application documents for your visa. So that means you're like, you need to take the appropriate passport photo, you need to translate your birth certificate, you need to translate all your documents, like your diploma and transcript, you need to um, photocopy a lot of documents, you need to show a health insurance, you need to show that you've been accepted to a university, you know, showing the offer that you've gotten from CEU, you need to show a financial statement, so like bank um, statement details for, from the past six months, like your account has had some kind of activity, you know, there's flow of money coming and going, so they need to look into that. You also need to show accommodation, so if you get a full scholarship that is sometimes covered by, like it's an A-plus scholarship, if you get that, you get a full tuition waiver, you get monthly stipends, you get a health insurance covered, and plus you also get in accommodation provided by CEU because they need to calculate your financial needs in Austria so you need to have signed a um, house contract or a dorm contract and you need to put that in your visa application as well and there's an application form you need to fill out and there's so many other things I'm gonna link down everything so you can look into the list of documents you need to prepare for Hungary and for Austria so yeah, that's the whole process. Then you show up to your interview at the embassy or consulate and they will interview you, they will ask you questions. The people that interviewed me were really, really lovely. They were making jokes and they were really funny. So we just laughed and I gave all my documents and in no time I was accepted. However, that is the normal process. Given the fact during this whole pandemic situation, this whole process was mutated basically into a whole confusing bundle of I don't know what because I had to wait until summer ended because in Turkey the foreign embassies were closed until July, mid-July basically or end of July and once they opened up you won't believe just like like this all slots were booked I could not get an appointment until two months later after the opening of the Austrian consulate in Istanbul so I got my appointment and by the time I got my appointment my studies already started in Vienna in Austria that meant that I was studying online until I could get to Austria which was really really just such a confusing time because I had to move out of my house in Istanbul and I have to take care of all my residence permit and like processes in Istanbul as well as working on my residence permit or visa stuff in Austria it was such a hectic time and then my studies started and I had to deal with that as well and I was only able to leave Istanbul in December. So imagine, I waited four months in order to leave Turkey. So yeah, that's how I applied to CEU. Now Central European University is actually a US credited university and it provides all of its programs in English. I would say that it's really, really such an opportunity and an honor for me to be able to study in this university because it was my dream. And that's why I applied twice, otherwise the first time that I applied and I couldn't go, I completely lost all hope. And I was really really saddened by the fact that it was just something circumstantial, but still I couldn't go. Because human rights, like a master in human rights was always like my lifelong dream. Even like in high school I would dream and be like, oh I would study masters, like who does that right? But I used to. In any case, it worked out. CEU originally is situated in Budapest. But recently they also opened up a campus in Vienna. I actually live really close to the campus here in Vienna. And my department was transferred fully to Vienna. 
and which is really great because Vienna is a great city. It's really, really beautiful. It was still such a journey. It was an adventure and I'm really, really happy that I came through and I am almost at the end of this journey at this point. So if you have any questions and whatnot, just look into the website of the university. You can find all the information you need. And if there's something that you cannot find, you just email the university, just contact them and they will reply to you like this because this university, they are really, really interactive. They're very fast, you know, in terms of responding to their emails. So you won't be just left waiting for weeks and months on end. Also, after you make your application, trust me, you'll get so many emails telling you what the next step is. So you will never be left lost and to do everything by yourself. You will always have guidance and help from the university, they will help you out and your department will definitely help you out as well. So just don't worry about that. It's a very, very easy process. You just need to go through it and that's it. Thank you guys for watching this video. So this is part one of my video series. In the second part, I'm gonna be making a video talking about how I moved from Turkey to Europe and how the visa process happened and what was required, what I needed to do, blah, 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 blah. Uh, all that information in the next video. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video.